All right, so now we're going to, um, there's a hands-on exercise here, and if you're checking me out, catching me, or whatever, the code we're working out is GitHub goes to 11, and we're on Golang Web Dev, that repo, and you can find me on Twitter right there. So you should follow me because I'm always giving away Mercedes and trips to Europe and all kinds of crazy stuff. It's awesome. But, um, and talking about Golang. But here we have using uh, the hands-on challenges. Using cookies, track how many times a user has been to your website. Okay? And uh, um, so uh, you can do that right there. And pause the video and see if you can write this code out. And now I'm going to show you the solution. <laughs> so if you don't want to see the solution, pause the video now. All right, here's the solution. And so we have this route, empty route. Anything that comes there goes to foo. And we request the cookie, my cookie. And if there is an error, so if the error is equal to HTTP error no cookie, because cookie here will return the error. I'm just looking to see if it's in the documentation. Cookie returns the name cookie provided in the request, or error no cookie if not found. So that's straight from the documentation, and uh, that's part of uh, the request and asking for a cookie. And so if we go look at the, go, the documentation, go doc, net HTTP, and we look at the request, All right, here's the request, and we have the request here, and we're looking for uh, request cookie. And so here's request cookie, and so we could go look at that, right? So any request coming in to the server, we could request that cookie, and it'll give us back the pointer to the cookie if it's there, right? Or an error. Cookie returns the name cookie provided in the request, or error no cookie if not found. Right? If multiple cookies match the given name, only one cookie will be returned. And so that's just bad programming on your part if that's the case. Um, so here we have request cookie, my cookie. If error is equal to HTTP error no cookie, then cookie, uh, we're setting a cookie. We're saying HTTP cookie is my cookie and the value is zero. Right? Because the value is zero. That's the first, first time. First time you've been here is no cookie. We're writing a we're, we're creating a cookie for you, so that's what the cookie is equal to. And then we're going to do string convert ASCII to int. String convert, package string convert. And we're converting a string from ASCII to int and the cookie value, which is this zero. We're converting that to an int. We're getting a count back. If there's an error, we stop the program. We're incrementing that count, plus, plus, add one to it. And then we do cookie value is equal string convert int to ASCII, right, and we're turning that, that count back into a string and assigning it back to cookie value, and then we're setting that cookie, the response in the cookie, and then we're writing back to our response the cookie value just out of interest. That's what we're sending back. This is the number of times it's been incremented. That's pretty cool. Now let's run it. So right now, first, I'm just going to go to application and go look at my cookies. And, uh, and there is my W Google CH. Not good for you to see. Clear all. And uh, that one, I don't know what that is. I'm not concerned. Because by the time you watch this video online, I'll change all of that. Now I'm going to go to localhost. Nothing, right? Try again. Nothing. What did I do wrong? Uh, string convert parsing some value. Invalid syntax. Cool. We get to do some troubleshooting. So we're in 04 solution. 04 solution. And it tells me uh, this maybe on line 49. Maybe that's what that's telling me. But there is no line 49. 2017 49. On line 20 maybe. Position 17. 49. I don't know. But it's saying parsing. Uh, parsing some value invalid syntax, string convert A to I. String convert A to I, cookie value, cookie value, A to I, some, parsing some value invalid syntax. So I guess the first thing we'll do is func.println cookie.value. Let's run it again.
and uh, the func.println gave us some value. So why are we storing some value here? Why is some value being stored there? Because I still have a cookie, right? I still have a cookie on my, my browser. And uh, I can't see that cookie here, but I need to clear it out in some way. So how would I check if there's already a cookie cleared out? This only works if there isn't already a cookie. I need to change the name of my cookie. Because over here, I had my cookie, right? So if people run this in sequence, it's going to throw them off if their cookies are still there. So I'm going to fix that by calling this my cookie counter, because that's the one I'm asking for now. So I gave it a new name. I'll give it a new name here. Because some value, when I had my cookie, there was some value, right, from the previous program. It's still sitting there on my computer. I send the request up, it grabs it, tries to run it, and the program dies before it sends back and writes a new cookie to my machine. Right? But now that I'm no longer going to ask for some cookie, which is already in my machine, or my cookie, which is already in my machine, I'm going to ask for my cookie counter. This will run. So let's rerun it. Import and not use funct. Ooh, it's almost time to go. And now let's rerun it. So I'm running, refresh, and so I still have my cookie some value, but now I have my cookie counter. So I could get rid of this one, delete, get rid of that one, delete, get rid of this one, delete. And now, but that's why I was getting that error. Now every time I go back to this page, right, it's counting. Pretty cool, right? Now you're ready to build that. How many? 173,000 people have visited this web page right from 1999. It's pretty neat. All right, that's uh, doing a counter with a cookie.